Sing to God, all peoples of the world. Sing praises to God most high. From the sanctuary of heaven, God gives life and renews the face of the earth. Let the righteous be joyful. Let us all be jubilant with joy. We continue to celebrate Easter as we now give God the praise. and sisters, God not only desires our repentance, but longs to offer us forgiveness. Therefore, we cast all our concerns on our caring God. Loving God, we confess that we do not always bring honor and glory to your name. We are rebellious and weak. We flee before your goodness. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us by the grace and mercy of Christ, that we may rise up again in peace to love and serve your world. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Spirit of God is resting on us to restore, support, and strengthen us. Therefore, be at peace in the one who forgives and loves us. Rise up and give God thanks. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. This is the ascension of Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, and they went to the room upstairs where they were staying and were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. Jesus prays for his disciples as he has just taught them that he is soon to depart from them, and that in him they will have peace. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know that I came from you. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tucked away in southern Indiana on the Ohio River at the Wabash is a little town called New Harmony. Its claim to fame started in the early 1800s when a Robert Owen began a communal utopian community that ultimately failed. In the 1940s, wealthy descendants of his returned to reclaim the town and settlement. Paul Tillich is a renowned German theologian, is buried there. But more than that, there's another part that I want to lift up to you today. There was a little railway station with a basement, and several years ago, uh, the folks who came back to reclaim the town decided that they wanted to make the little train station a holding place for protecting seeds of rare plants and trees from becoming extinct. In essence, the gospel lesson to which we are reading today, according to John, is a repository of its own for the word of God. One core seed being preserved in the book of John for all humanity and all ages is found in verse 3 of today's lesson. The words go like this, this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and him whom you sent in Jesus Christ. Not just them, but that all in the future generations may be inspired to produce fruit of discipleship. Jesus has been preparing his disciples for quite some time now for his departing from them and to be able to find obedience and commitment in their own lives that they too might go from being followers, even mediocre followers, to the dispensers of God's truth and word that they would be led by the Holy Spirit. Now he has washed their feet, given them the commandments to love God, to love neighbor, and to love the self. He has promised them the gift now of the Holy Spirit. And now he prays for disciples' protection and for their commitment to the ministry that they are to carry on uh, after his time on earth. Now, we note that these disciples are not outstanding um, theologians. In fact, they were somewhat like a lot of people down through the ages and even us today. Quite ordinary and not so well prepared for the job that they were going to be given. If God has used even those people, God can use us even today. Even the ones who have meant evil for good. And how it is that God continues to use us all. It is the Holy Spirit that sustains and models all of God's children into being effective movers in the kingdom of God. We become empowered even when we least expect it. Now let me share my story. We never quite know who and how much others are praying for our calling and purpose in life until the Holy Spirit has had the Holy Spirit's way. And I might say that in my younger years, I was aware that my family elders and church pastors were praying for me in the sense of my calling into ministry. I always seemed to escape the essence of their prayers. 
for about 15 years, as a matter of fact. Yet little did I know that there was one who had been carrying the seed of the Spirit carefully in his heart for a few years uh, and was in the hopes that I would acknowledge God's call. His name was Walter. Walter was an elder in our church. Walter was the school board attorney where I served on the school board. And I knew Walter from these uh, uh, avenues, but we did not travel in the same social circles. So little did I realize that Walter had the thoughts that he had until I went to see him personally about a business matter where I wanted to start a new business. It was April Fool's Day, 1974. I was preparing to start this business, went in to see Walter. Walter was tapping his pencil lightly on the table uh, as I described to him what I was doing, wanting to do, and what I needed from him. When I finished speaking, Walter looked up and he said, you know, Mike, I've never seen you in any uh, way other than being in the ministry. My chin dropped and I literally could not speak for a few moments. And then I looked up and talked to Walter for a moment and said, Walter, I think I need to go home, talk to Doc and pray about what you just said. It was only a week later that Dodd and I were visiting the Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. And within the month, I was enrolled for the fall semester of studies for ministry. All through my ministry, I have carried the question, was I really worthy? Am I really the person that can do the job that God thinks I can do? And then after 46 years, I do really realize that Jesus selected unqualified people and qualified them for the ministry, for dispensing God's word. If he could do that with his disciples who were mediocre followers, he could also do that for me. Not everyone wants to preach or teach. But all of us have hearts and hands that are dedicated to the work of the kingdom. The only part we need to pick up on is that even if we do not feel we're qualified, God, through the work of the Holy Spirit, will qualify us. Jesus prayed for his disciples. He left those prayers for the disciples to offer all to all of God's little ones the message of truth and justice. And throughout the ages, that prayer has lit on the heads, the hearts, and the minds of the followers and the believers of Jesus Christ. The stories of faith have been passed down through the years and the generations that we all might journey together and be a part of this repository of faith the seeds of the Spirit that go with us now and forevermore. Amen. As we have lifted up the Word of God, we now uh, offer the words of an affirmation of faith. The statement that I will read today comes from the Confession of 1967, the Presbyterian Church. Out of Israel, God in due time raised up Jesus. His faith and obedience were the response of the perfect child of God. He was the fulfillment of God's promise to Israel, the beginning of the new creation, and the pioneer of a new humanity. He gave history its meaning and direction and called the church to be his servant for the reconciliation of the world. In Jesus Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. He is the eternal Son of the Father who became the human and lived among us to fulfill the work of reconciliation. He is present in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit 
to continue and to complete his mission. Now let us pray. Redeeming God, you call us to be one with you. As you are one with Christ, as his perfect love casts out our fear and changes it to love, unite us by your spirit of peace that we may be one with you. Loving God, bless us with a word of life this day to restore, support, and strengthen us through the crisis that seems to be all around us. Redeeming God, you call us to devote ourselves constantly to prayer for the sake of Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us offer our prayers this day on behalf of your church and the world, that we may be one with Christ as Christ is one with you. Rescuing God, you give the desolate a home to live in and lead us all into fullness of life. Help us to order the patterns of our ordinary life to support the health of your human family and the welfare of your world. Help us to grow in strength and courage to witness to this hope that all may find your saving love eternally in Christ. Therefore, God, we pray for solace and easing of pain where there is suffering. And as we pray for those in our midst that so desiring relief from their illness, we pray for the loneliness that lingers around us. And we continue to lift up the fortunes of those who are being left behind in this pandemic. Dear God, bring us to such a concern for our neighbor that we awaken more nearly to the compassion to which you call us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. And now may we go out into the peace of Christ and the love of God and to be amongst his people, his children, that we might all be saved into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Amen.